Well, good morning, welcome to Chasing Chung's TV and welcome to the magnificent Bowl Carp Syndicate. You join me on probably one of the carpiest swims that there ever has been. You join me on the boards and as you can see, it is absolutely superb. Now I'm just plotted up just in the uh, trees just at the back looking over that view and I'm in this swim because at this time of year it's got to be one of the better swims on the lake. Now this place always spawns lighter than most other lakes just from the sheer amount of water and how long that water takes up to get the temperature to start and trigger them carp into spawning. Most of the other lakes have spawned, in all honesty, but this one is still a couple of weeks away, in my opinion. But, before they do that, then fish start to group up. And every year, at this time of year and next month, you'll find them out down on this right hand side or all along this bank. It's a nice shallow area, there's weed here, not that there's too much weed at the moment, it's just starting to come up. But with that weed, that's what attracts these carp to come down here and be in the shallow end of the uh, bowl. Obviously it eats up a lot quicker and that's why them fish gravitate here. I had a little walk around yesterday, I seen a fish nut out on the reed line down to the right hand side. So that just confirmed that I've got to get in this swim. I think there was a couple of anglers in here last night, not too sure whether they're valid in. Uh, but I'm here for the next 48 hours and I'm going to make the most of it if I can and hopefully catch my first fish out of here for this year. Now I am on a little bit of a blanking uh, session at the moment. I've not been fishing too effectively. So to obviously get that first fish out of the way down here and build that confidence up again. Not that I don't need it, you know, I do, I have caught fish. Uh, over on the uh, other lake over the other side but you know to get one out of here and just coming off a blank on a relatively easy water uh, does uh, give you confidence a little bit of a kick in but two rods have gone out this morning one rod has gone off probably about two rod lengths off the floating island over there or should I say a floating raft and the right hand rod has just gone down in the channel in between the reeds and the raft in just that little bit of open water there you always see them at this time of year down here so hopefully fingers crossed we'll have one now my bivy is down in the trees just behind and at the end of these boards but i'm going to be moving my bivy up down onto the boards during the night just to be a little bit more close to my rods uh, than having to uh, navigate down the boards during the uh, middle of the night if we do get a take. The reason why I'm just plotted up here is just a little bit more noise, a little bit more sheltered and it keeps me away off the boards if them fish are patrolling up and down this area then you know me being on the boards making a noise it ain't going to be the wrong one so i'd rather just keep off them the boards area and just make all my noise down here and just plot up during the night and, and sleep at the end of the boards close to my rods so guys enjoy the next 48 hours and uh yeah i'll catch you a little bit later so the third rod that's going out is the rod that's going out long towards the buoy in the distance at 120 yards it's a pretty comfortable uh, throw out there because obviously you've got the wind pushing from behind over towards that way and 120 yards on here is standard in all honesty i'm going to put a solid bag out there i'm going to put some bait over the top of it uh, but for now, let's just get this rod out. Let's get it fishing. Uh, all rods have gone out on solid bags. Uh, one's got a Ronnie rig in it, which is the one down in the channel down to the right hand side. 
Uh, this one's just got a little uh, dumbbell match the hatch wafter in there with a little yellow topper. Right, let's get it out. Boom. That will do very nicely. Just to the right of the boy. I am going to be putting a back lead on this one, just in case I do pick up a fish on the right hand side. It's going to be an absolute nightmare to play them round here, but if I've got a bit of a back lead punching right down and then out, then it's going to make it a little bit easier to guide that then fish round if we're lucky enough to get a bite. I've got to put some spod mix over that one. That one will stop out for the duration or until it goes. There's no weed out there. There's nothing that is going to foul up that solid bag going in. Might bring it in tomorrow just to freshen things up a little bit in case we've had any silvers but at the moment I'm pretty confident that rig out there in that solid bag is presented. It's just sunk now so I'm just going to put it down here. Not got the best line light to it. But you do what you got to do and at least I've got snag ears on there for when it hoops over. Twelve o'clock, all's quiet out in the swim. The only thing that's not quiet is the busy A5 road, which runs parallel right behind the back of the swim. It's the only thing wrong with these swims because the road would be absolutely so carpy and perfect. Is that you've got that busy main road and the three swims or four swims on this bank would be absolutely wonderful without that noise and that's the only thing that you've got to put up with when you're in these swims the road is busy 24 7 it does not stop all the way through the night you've got heavy lorries going down there you've got all sorts going down behind and uh, yes it can be a bit of a pain having to listen to that all the way through the night when you're trying to get to sleep now since I put the rods out this morning, I've had to recast and reset two of my rods once again. Because the swan over there decided it didn't want to go around my lines. He thought it'll push all the way through and ruin two of my uh, rods, which was over down to the right hand side. It didn't even try to get round them, it just literally fair waved all the way through my loins and I literally had to hoop both the loins off its neck. However, them rods have been brought in an extra wrap this way just 
because I might do the night in the woods here because we are expected quite high winds and to be out on these boards right out in, in the middle of the Alpen water and nothing literally to break the wind then it will be pr pretty unpleasant but I'll see what happens a little bit later on whether the wind does push down uh, but I've not even got my bed out of the car yet or anything else I've just got the bare essentials after speaking to Andy he says a lot of the fish have been showing up on the man bank over there which is obviously that wind pushing in but I'm still pretty confident that, that this is going to be the swing that's going to produce I did a couple of photos this time of year for a good friend of mine named uh, Wayne Harmon who had a nice session in here literally today uh, and the reason why I know that is because it, because it came up on my Facebook uh, memories that he had a couple of uh, decent chunks out of here at this time of year we all know every year is a different time isn't it and uh, the weed hasn't even come up like it has done normally and that's due to uh, it, the water clarity being a little bit more of a pea green and we had a little bit of an algae bloom on here it, I don't even think it was from this lake I think it was from the uh, the other reservoir at the top but obviously that reservoir feeds this one and uh, obviously it goes down to the water course down into the canal so it's started to clear up now in fact you wouldn't actually think it was the it was the same water if you had seen it a couple of weeks ago it was literally pea green all the way over and the clarity was absolutely awful but it's cleared up a lot and uh, yeah it's looking a little bit more back to normal so yeah just wait it out and uh, I'll give it till tonight before I decide where I'm going to be uh, pitching up and spending the night but for now, yep, let's wind away them hours and uh, let's kick back, chill out, have a cup of tea and enjoy my time down here. Right, so three spots out over the baited area just to put a little bit of fresh bait out there for the evening and night ahead. The tufties and the coots have been diving on me for most of the morning. Thankfully they haven't picked me up uh, but I thought you know what let's put a bit of fresh bait out there and uh, let's sit on that for the night ahead. I'm not going to be bringing my BV down on the boards. I'm going to leave them where it is and uh, we are still expecting high winds during the night so i'm just going to uh, shelter in that little bit of an area there from that uh, side wind so i won't pick up the uh, video blog again i'm going to uh, log off for the evening and uh, just try and relax and see if anything comes during the night so i'll catch you in the morning guys ta-da
Well, good morning. Half past five in the morning. Been up since four o'clock this morning. Uh, spotting fish. I have seen some to be fair. However, they have been probably about 300 yards that way. Right at the back of the island. Where they can't be fished for. Uh, apart from that, all's been quiet. Seen a couple of flat spots coming up over my uh, baited area. I'm not too sure what that's all about, whether it's uh, the, the birds diving down or whether we've got fish activity there. But I do know that we haven't caught a fish. Uh, but you've always got a chance down here till around about half eleven ish, something like that. So I'm going to keep positive until then and uh, we'll see through the day today and see if anything happens which in all honesty i'm uh, not too confident that anything will happen during the day but you never know do you not seeing any egg torches on around the lake in all honesty i don't think much has been out but obviously i'll get to find out a little bit later on if anything's done or if anything's been caught. Lovely morning, lovely sunset as usual. Always a pleasure to uh, wake up down here on the bowl uh, syndicate just from the, uh, the morning sun when it comes up. It's always very spectacular indeed. So until anything happens this morning, I'm going to stop out here, try and spot fish, uh, and fingers crossed I'll spot one in the areas where I'm fishing.
so near with that and it's a good sucker fish as well I would say yeah it's definitely a 20 most definitely oosh get in well hopefully you can see me okay we have our first fish of the year let's see if it'll let me hold her up just come on a little dumbbell wafter match the hatch over the maxi nut 12 mils with some micro pellets as well just to keep them grubbing around in the area and keep them occupied until they pick up that hook bait so onwards and upwards uh, let's get this rod back out let's get it fishing and let's see whether we can uh, grab another one for this video blog but in all fairness just having the one is all that we come out for and um, yes mission complete so with the return of that 24 pound four ounce mirror the rods have gone back out on the spot i've put a bit of extra free bait out there boilies and also micro pellet as said and mentioned on the capture of the fish the micro pellets are there solely just to keep them fish in the area grubbing around as much as possible until they hit, hit the hook bait nothing more they ain't there for feed they're just there just to keep that dinner table active and also make it a little bit frustrating for them carp to keep sucking up them micro pellets the longer they're there feeding the more you got chance of picking the fish up now as i was putting my spawn out i looked down to my right hand side and seen a fish roll the winds turned round to a northwesterly which is pushing down to my right hand corner i was just seen a fish roll just at the back of the buoy and with that there might be a few fish pushed down on that new wind the baiting situations down there as i said previously i've just throwing sticked boilies out there with a pop-up and we'll see whether that does the fish going forward on this new wind so i'm gonna have myself a celebratory brew and kick back knowing that you know this video blog has got a fish on it it's going to make things a little bit more interesting and a little bit more relaxed for it it's always difficult getting that first fish out of the way but uh it is a, a very much a, as a, a relief because my previous two trips have been blanks right see you later well you join me at three o'clock on the afternoon I was having a little bit of an afternoon snooze in the bivvy and all hell broke loose because the wind decided to try and take my pod off the staging. I was very very lucky to get to it before it dropped down there and the only thing that really did stop it was the back foot of my pod got trapped in the uh, gaps in the staging. So I've had to come up with an absolute genius idea, if I say so myself, and take a look at this. So I've made a brace. These are what I use for my bivy pegs, if I'm ever on wooden staging. That is electric fence screw fixing. So they use these to screw into the the fence posts and then they run the cable through them you can buy these for about six pound for around about 20 it just saves paying the carp tax and buying specific bivy pegs that's, that's got screws on the end so i've just screwed them down onto the boarding got my normal nash bivy peg and basically I've braced it across like so 
that ain't going nowhere. Up here for thinking, down there for dancing. So, that's where we are for three o'clock on the afternoon. Crisis averted. And onwards and upwards with the session. Been seeing quite a few fish roll out into no man's land out at the back of the island per usual, as we did see this morning. Unfortunately, the positioning where my bivy is, it does hinder my uh, view down to my right hand side on that prevailing wind down there. But I would imagine that there'll be fish down there, especially being the new wind as well. So, yeah, let's crack on with the uh, rest of the afternoon. And I'll pick up the camera uh, for this evening and um, before the log off but for now yeah just chill out sit me be there and uh, enjoy that view see you in a bit guys so with this evening drawing in I'm just getting a couple of bags tied up ready for tonight so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to show you how I go about setting up my solid bags. They are a little bit different from, I would say, anybody else that does them out there. I know there's a couple of other consultants out there that have uh, showed how to tie solid bags, but you've not seen it done this way before because it's something that I come up with. So, the solid bag of choice is either the ESP plain multi or serrated bags or the PVA mini ones them two will cover all aspects of my fishing if I want something a little bit heavier to get down in the weed these will work brilliantly I also use these today when you got heavy side winds and you got winds pushing directly into your face the reason being because they're heavy they cast better and they go through the wind a little bit easier than they do than the, with the little bags which tend to drift so that's what we're going to be using for the solid bags i never move away from esp they are the best in my opinion and if it's not esp then I'm going to say quarter. So, what you first need is a rig. So I'm just going to put that down and just show you. So this is the setup. Now I'm using a Ronnie rig on and in my solid bags. And that is no different from any other Ronnie rig out there that you can actually buy or construct yourself the only difference is that you've got a shorter hook link for going in your solid bags and I've just put a ESP tungsten bead on there to counterbalance the pop up really really simple the lead set up that's a three ounce lead and inside there is in my opinion the best stem solid bag stem you can get that is the avid one the reason why i like it is because it's a hard plastic construction it's all molded inside and i'll tell you exactly why as i'm tying this solid bag a little bit later why i really like this being firm and, and a lot more harder than the other stems out there which tend to be a little bit softer on the outside so to set up my bag this is the key if you can see your groove which you've got in most of the solid bag leads you don't really need that groove but it just makes it a little bit easier on how to tie my solid bag setup so what I do is I put my hook link back and then I wrap it around this stem what that does in turn is shortens your hook link so when it's lying flat on the bottom 
all you've got is a very very short hook link there basically almost on the lead when that fish picks it up then it's got the weight of the lead instantly when he starts to pull then what you'll find is the lead will rotate allow your extra hook link to release and you're back onto your full length hook link not only does it make it better to put in your solid bag because you've got less movement you've literally got instant hookups as soon as that fish hits the hook and the pop-up bang okay so to load it again i'm just going to go around once at the top and just let it drop free like so So can you see that, the pop-ups at the side, you've got the hook standing up flat and we've got the lead just over the top. So now I want to fill it with some fine crumb. Now this is just to protect the hook point, nothing more. If you put in uh, the other micro pellets, there's always a chance of one of them pellets masking the hook. So use this nice fine crumb, and you know that it's not going to uh, get hooked up on the hook point. Once you've done that, just keep filling up. There's it. The solid bag. Put a bit in and just keep turning and working them pellets down in the bag. Now this could take a while. Now if you can see there I'm using micro pellets. Don't use anything other than micro pellets in your solid bag because if you do that creates air. You don't want air in your bag because you won't be able to get it tight enough and it will also give you a bad presentation on the lake bed because obviously because of holding air then you've got a chance of it flipping and the bag rising off the bottom so always use micro pellets for your solid bags you can use crushed up boilies but obviously you want them pretty fine Now that seems quite tight, so I'm going to introduce a few more scoops. Again, I appreciate you sticking with me. It's not the easiest doing this on your own. Far from it. And if I had somebody there recording, I could literally do this within minutes. But obviously I'm trying to hold the camera, I'm get, trying to get everything all ready and it does make it a little bit more awkward all the way around. So I've tapped that down. Now the beauty of the Avid Solid stem is that it allows you just to get tight on that stem you can really compress it down and you can get your bags really nice and tight around that solid stem because of how hard the plastic is when I've used some of the other solid bag stems they seem to be squishy and move they move a lot so you just can't seem to compress it down like you can with the Avid ones. As you can see, I've got that really, really tight. And it's not going anywhere. Just one more little scoop, and I think we've done.
and push it down, get it tight. There we go. Now I always tie off my solid bags. The reason being, if you lick and stick, then you can't seem to get the bag tight enough. But with this called a quick melt solid PVA tape, uh, this is my preferred type. But there is also another, uh, let's see if I can find it here. Yeah. There's also the easy melt braided PVA string as well, which is really, really tough. But most of the time, because it's too stretchy, that I use this to tie off my bags. So, let's go around. Tie it off. Now, I, decide, I do like to go around underneath. And this is just to make the bag a little bit more tighter. And get it really bedded down. Tie it off, put them off, and just trim the top, get rid of this excess PVA. There we go. Now, as for folding in the corners, a lot of the people go that way. I prefer to go back, and the reason is when you're casting these out at distance I want to try and make it more of a domed shape for aerodynamics when it's going out so I'll just push the corners in if you've done the bag right you'll find that it's not the easiest thing to push them corners in because your bag is so tight and just get the corner there Flip the corner and bend it down. And if you can see, that's starting to take shape. Let's just get this other side done. And I'm just working these corners in. Bish, bash, bosh. That is ready to go out, cocked, primed, and let's see whether we can get a fish on it tonight. So, hope you've liked this, guys. Give this uh, video a thumbs up, give it a subscribe, and go out and try it. I think you'll be very, very impressed. It's not done me any uh, harm anyway. Makes loading the bags a lot more easier and i think in my personal opinion the hooking capabilities are a lot better right all done see you in a bit
tell you, join me at nine o'clock on the evening. As you can see, the sun is setting behind me. The rods are out, all ready for the night ahead. And it's been very, very quiet today. But it's nothing that I don't expect because I don't seem to get too many daytime bites down here. Well, when I say daytime bites, anything after 11 o'clock onwards. The only place I've really seen to get a daytime and afternoon bites is over on the island swim over there. But here, I really seem like I'm camping for the best part of the day. And it ain't until we go into the night, the first thing in the morning, that you expect to start and pick fish up. I have been seeing a few fish roll the other side of the pontoon for most of the afternoon. Now, obviously I can't put a rod over there because if a fish does kite and I am lucky enough to pick up a fish and it kites left, then there's a good possibility that I'm gonna lose it. And I don't wanna leave a, a fish with a rig in its mouth just because I'm fishing at all costs to try and get a bite, I'd rather not bother. Now, obviously my rod's been down in that little channel in between the pontoon and the reed area for 36 hours, it's not done anything. And it wasn't until I seen three fish roll to the left hand side, just into deeper water, that I decided to take that rod off and put it there for the evening and the 12 hours ahead as we go into the night and the morning. Just something just to change it up and you know, it's the only fish that I've seen this side of that pontoon. So, you know, targeting that little bit of extra deeper water uh, makes you wonder whether they're just holding off on that shelf. So, you know, worth a try. And uh, we'll see what happens going into the night and obviously in the morning. So, good night guys. And uh, I will obviously pick the camera up if we do have anything and update the video blog. But if not, we'll enjoy the morning together. And uh, yeah, I'll be sitting on my hands in the morning hopefully waiting for a chunk to turn up. So, good night guys, catch you later. Good morning. Well, just got eight o'clock. Waiting for these fish to turn up, if they do and i've probably got another couple of hours left before i wrap up and he's come to join me because he's dropping in here after me and he's got the old dog with him and hopefully he'll capitalize on this swim over this uh, weekend and if he don't then it's obviously bloody rubbish <laughs> <gasps> to be fair it ain't, it ain't easy, easy. No, not right, it? it certainly ain't. You know, considering that, that spawning ain't far away, in all honesty, you know, I thought they'd have been on the feed, but it certainly isn't the case, because uh, it certainly isn't fishing the way it should be fishing. Right, until I log off a little bit later, 
bring these rods in. A cup of tea time. And Andy's Mikey. Well, unfortunately, I've got to bring these rods in and bring this video blog to an end. Hope you've enjoyed the uh, past 48 hours from being down here. And it's always nice to get my first fish out of the year. Uh, I will be dropping it on and off this uh, syndicate throughout the year. So obviously a lot more, hopefully, and a few more fish to catch. They've not really switched on as in regards to what they should do. I don't think we've just had the temperatures that these fish have found their way into these shallows at the moment. But um, they definitely have not been on the field and it's definitely not been easy. I'm also going to be uh, doing a video blog on a new water, another reservoir. So again, an even more incentive just to hit that subscribe button just down in this corner and come and follow my channel which uh, in the next couple of days i'll be going off and doing that video blog uh, but yeah i'm gonna get these rods in get back home bring the video blog to an end and leave andy to uh, hopefully capitalize and catch a couple of fish out of here so to off for now it's a bish bash bosh keep it tush wet nets tight lines See you on the next video, guys. Bye-bye.